God doing a thing. God does a thing. Uh, you know, if you notice, they're standing here at this place at this time, Corona's family and Dorcas's family, and, and uh, Dorcas's mother could not be here, so a friend of the family, and uh, spiritual sister, her daughter, uh, is standing in the gap. And so uh, it's an awesome opportunity because it's family that's brought them to this spot this time, literally. Literally. I mean, it's really had a significant impact. And that's why they stand like this, you know, because it talks about in Psalm 127, 3, how children are a gift of the Lord. And, uh, and, and the other interesting thing is, it's not only that, but the relationships. And relationships are God, everything He does is in the area of relationships to bring them to this spot. And so, with that established, what I will do is speak some things to you. Q. Sorry. <laughs> Q has not made it easy on us Americans for many years. And it's a, it's a, but Guabana uh, is, uh, is going to speak things in the spiritual realm and, uh, and release. So in Genesis 2.24, it says, For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So, so before that happens, what I want to do is invite your dad to speak any blessings in relation to what the Lord would put on his heart. I just want to pray and speak the love of God into you. That is the only thing I know, the love of God and the love of Jesus Christ. Dying for me, rescuing me, and making me a son of the living God. The only thing I know about God is His mercies. So, have now in the name of Jesus Christ, speak the love of God into your life and into your marriage. May Jesus Christ be the foundation that your marriage was to you. May the blood of Jesus Christ always provide the mercies before the Father so that your prayers will be answered your marriage will be blessed. The fruits that God gives you will be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. So Dorcas, I speak to you and your family. In Numbers chapter 30, verses 3 and 4, it speaks this passage about, it says, In the day that a woman makes a vow, and her father hears it, and all the vows in which she establishes will stand. So what we want to do is not necessarily where your father hears it and says nothing, but we want to offer your dad the opportunity to speak blessings into this relationship also. Um, my daughter, Lucas, um, today as you bring your marriage before God, these are a few ways I want to speak into your life. When God gave you to me and your mother, I gave you the name Lucas Asempa Kumsen. Asempa simply means good news. The reason why I gave you that name is that it is this good news that made me who I am today. I and your mother have been living ever since we got married for almost 36 years now. What has kept us? Our secret. The source of our sustenance has been Jesus Christ. 
And we've been able to come this far because of the Lord Jesus Christ. God gave you to us. Um, you see us as watchmen over your life. Just as Pastor said, children are the gift of God unto men. And so, we have done our part by raising you up, and I thank God that you have come to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Today, my oversight responsibility over your life is coming to an end, and then I'm handing you over to your husband, Kobna Edujenfi. I wish you well. Be a good mother and a good wife. May the dew of heaven rest upon you. When the going get tough, the Lord God Almighty, who had mercy over me and saved my life, will come through for you. I declare upon your life, not only you, but also Kamina, that it shall be well with you. The Lord will bless the two of you with the fruit of the womb. You will never lack because the Lord will be your provider. I bless you. All I want to hear and I want to see that you are doing well. You know, since I became a Christian and as I've been teaching you people, divorce is not part of our vocabulary. Insult Abuse is not part of our vocabulary. Humble yourself before your husband. He is your head today. I'm talking in physical terms. So submit to him. Be um, his companion. Be his advisor. Do things together. And the good Lord will have mercy upon you. And you will be blessed. I ask again that the glory of God will characterize your relationship. People will see you and they will want to emulate you. They will come to you and ask, what is your secret? And you will tell them, it is Jesus. May the Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. of this relationship uh, of course you already have these blessings of love and declarations of blessings from your parents and I just want to say uh, to these two families they are a credit to the gospel to Jesus Christ they were a tremendous blessing to all of us who know them and so you have done well I was, as you were talking both of you I go oh man that's that's a place of inspiration for a father and a mother and you've done well but also the thing that I want to declare that I, I heard from the Lord is God's faithfulness and so I want to declare some passages of scripture over your relationship of binding the word of God into your marriage in relationship to the faithfulness of God because it's his faithfulness to us so much more than our faithfulness to him and so I want to declare these passages because in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, it talks about that when we are tempted, God is faithful to, one, provide a way of escape and put, not allow something more than we can bear. So I declare his faithfulness and the, the temptations are literally the Greek word for temptation literally means doorway. The enemy tries to put doors in front of you of compromise and sin. He's faithful. The second thing the Lord just really declared is 
is faithful he's, is he who calls you. He will bring it to pass. So we declare over you the callings of God over your life that his faithfulness to you will bring those things to pass. 1 John 1, 9 declares that if we sin, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You know, I'm convinced of this, that uh, I could not be married, I could not be in ministry, I, I don't know, it could be alive, apart from God's faithfulness to forgive. And so I declare that over you, that this marriage will be a, a testimony of the mercy and the grace of God. And so his faithfulness in the area of temptations, faithfulness in the area of calling, faithfulness in relationship to the forgiveness of sin. And the other one is in Hebrews 10, 23, where it says, faithful is he who called... No, I'm sorry. It says something about faithful <laughs> are the pin who's promised you. Hold fast the confessions of our hope, because faithful is he who has promised. So there are, I know there are many promises for both of you that are out there that God has made to you. In fact, I would say that you are a testimony of the promises that God has given to your, to your family. So God's faithfulness has brought you here. And we declare God's faithfulness in relationship to the promises that he has made and will make in your life. The other is in 2 Thessalonians 3.13. For he is faithful, God says, he is faithful to strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. So we declare that faithfulness of God to protect and put a shield and a bulwark around you to protect you. His faithfulness to you. And the last one I just want to declare is for me, it's in 2, Thessal 2 Timothy 2, verse 13. It says, when we're without faith, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. So I declare these foundations of faithfulness, of God's faithfulness into your life. And we also take of the things which your fathers have spoken into you as foundations also. And so what I want to invite you to do is to 